All right, I think we're ready to get started. Okay, I'll kick it off. Thanks, Dine. So hello, everyone. I think, I think everyone knows me. I'm Barbara Bylinga. I'm the founder and executive director. And I'm just excited to be hosting tonight and so we can share our scholars with you all. Um, this originated because many of the um, community members would ask, like, when are we going to learn about the Shikan countries? And so last year was our first year, and we did a, a cultural immersion with some of the scholars on um, some of the countries. And this year, we're, we're repeating. Um, we're doing tonight about Liberia, and then on May 3rd, we'll do it again about Cambodia, and we'll have two Cambodian scholars presenting. Um, Really what we want them to do is talk a lot about their country, but also about how they experienced growing up in their country and bringing their themselves and their stories to the to the presentation. We're going to record this so there's a lot of links and you'll be sent. Uh, you'll be sent a link to the recording so you don't have to write everything down if we go really fast across some of the links up to like movies and books and things and also. What, what we found in just going through it, um, you know, today that it's more fun when people ask questions. We started asking um, Tarly and Mira who are going to present questions along the way. And I think it made it more interesting. So please jump in um, and ask questions. And if you don't want to like break in, um, Kara, you want to wave, Kara? Yeah, Kara is manning the chat. And so if there's a question that's relevant to the section we're in, then she'll break in and, and ask it. So if you don't want to break in, you can just pop your question in the chat. Um, so with that, I'm just gonna let the scholars introduce themselves because they do the best job. Tarly, why don't you kick us off? Hi everyone, it's good to see you all. My name is Tarly Zan and I'm from Liberia. Um, I grew up outside the capital city right in Pinesville and I grew up with my father, my mom, and my younger sister inside Pinesville. But I later moved to Morovia, the capital city, to live with my uncle who was working there and to also help to do, with, to do some of the housework and look after his son. So currently, I'm at Babson College in Wellesley, and I'm concentrating in environmental sustainability. I have some amazing mentors through the Shikin program. And in the photo there, you see me with some of them at a Warriors game. So mm -hmm. tonight, I'm very excited to share with you about our beautiful country, Liberia. Okay, so I get to tell you a little more about Tarly because she's not going to totally brag on herself, so I will. She's also um, an African student. She, she's the community representative for the African Student Organization at Babson, and she also manages communication activities for the Sustainability Club. Last summer, she um, was an academic mentor to high school students. She currently works two jobs to support her herself, her spending money. She works at the, both the library and the gym, and she landed a really awesome internship at Northeast energy efficiency partnerships, and she's basically going to be helping them promote energy efficiencies. So thank you, Tarly, for helping us with this project. And so now I'll let Mira introduce herself. Or Mira, is it Mira or Myra? I'm never sure. I'm so sorry. I think I mispronounced your name. Oh, um, Myra. Okay, I got it. Go, Myra. Hi, everybody. My name is Myra. I'm from Liberia. And I grew up in Bonkani, Bangat, but after the death of my father, I was taken to the Crash Students Home Orphanage, as you can see in the picture there, where I grew up with my 44 brothers and sisters and went to school as well. I'm currently a student at Muhlenberg College and I'm studying public health. I also have a group of amazing mentors who are always there to support me no matter what. And my dream is to work in the medical sector in my country and to help make it better again. Thank you all so much for coming and I hope you'll be able to learn more about our beautiful country like beautiful my presentations. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so Mira is involved in the International Student Union, Women in STEM and the Public Health Advocate Club. And she's currently working on um, creating a writing program to empower young Liberian females in getting their writing better, developing effective writing skills. So she's already a change agent. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna just let them take it away. Tarly's gonna start off 
by telling us a little bit about the history of Liberia. Go, Tarly. Thanks, Barb. Um, so some of you might already know that Liberia has a very close connection with the United States. And this is because um, Liberia was funded in order to return free slaves back to Africa. And this all started here in the United States with the funding of the American Colonization Society in 1816. So the first group of free slaves were relocated to Liberia, they departed New York in 1820, and they went to what we see today to be this country that we call Liberia. But before all of that, we did not have that country. So Liberia has a very close connection, and today we see that reflection in our country with some of the streets and a lot of the things we do being very similar to that of the United States. So. Up there, you see our seal that says the love of liberty brought us here. And you also see the ship, which is a symbol of how the free slaves were relocated back to Africa. So the liberty there is like there to represent how Liberia represents freedom. So we consider ourselves the land of liberty, the land of freedom. So initially, Liberia was governed by representatives of the American Colonization Society. And this was until later on when J.J. Ravos, Joseph Jenkins Ravos, who became Liberia's first president, took the leadership position as a governor of the Liberian Commonwealth. And J.J. Ravos was very, very instrumental in helping Liberia to become an independent nation. So today we have him on the $10 Liberian bill, J.J. Ravos. And Liberia became independent in 1847. It was actually the first African nation to declare its independence. So we are kind of old. Um, yeah, and our government structure is also very similar to the United States. We have three branches of government and we have the Supreme Court and everything. And our capital city, Monrovia, is named after President James Moreau of the United States. So a lot of similarities that I cannot even mention right now. Oh, Tarly, show um, the sign or the flag. Can we go back to the flag? Yes. I, yeah. I should also mention the flag. You see the similar color with the red, white, and the blue. But we have a single star representing Liberia becoming the first single independent nation in Africa. Nice. So Liberia is a very small country, as you can see there in the red. We have an area of about 43,000 square miles, which is similar to the size of Louisiana. And our population is about 5.3 million. We are not that many, almost the same population of South Carolina. But within this population, we have women making up almost half of the total population. But young people make up a very large portion of the Liberian population with 65%. And although our constitution says we are a secular state, Liberia is very, very religious. We have 85.5% Christians, and we also have Muslims being the next largest group. We also have people who are traditional, and we have other religions like Buddhists and like Hindus, but they don't make up a large percentage of our population. So... Sundays are like very special in Liberia. Most people stay home, they go to church in the morning, and then they will come back home and just hang around with their family. People make the nicest meal of the week on Sunday, and they just consider Sunday to be a very special day. Most businesses are also closed during this time. So that's it for the demographic of our beautiful country. Just more to say, but we don't have all the time. I'll let Mira tell you about how Liberia is divided into tribes. Thank you, Tarly. So I'm going to be talking to you about the tribes and the counties that make up Liberia. But before that, I'm going to ask you a question that you can omit yourself and answer or write in the chat. So how, how many tribes do you think there are in Liberia? Hmm. 20. And how Eight. many counties, how many, thank you. How many counties do you think are there in Liberia? Eight. Oh, wow, 200, thank you. <laughs> so actually there are about 15 counties in Liberia and these counties are like states, but they are much smaller than the US, the states in the US. And uh, 
I'm from Bone County, as you can see on the slide, this central region there. And Tara Lee is from Nimba County, which is like Northeast, the proper region there of Bone County. So generally when we Liberians say where we are from, we don't necessarily tell you where we're born. We tell you where our parents are from. So if you were born in Nimba County, but your parents are from Monrovia, you are from Monrovia. So I told every one of you that I'm from Bone County because my parents are from Bone County. So how many tribes do you think there are in Liberia? 20. Oh, for eight. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, actually, there are 16 tribes in Liberia. Thank you, Rhonda. Actually, there are 16 tribes in Liberia, as you can see listed on the crest, and one American Liberian group. The American Liberians are descendants of slaves who were resettled on the land called Liberia in 1822. And the 16 tribes are indigenous tribes that were already there. And these indigenous tribes are divided into three language groups, the Mende, the Kwa, and the Mel. I speak Pele entirely. She speaks Gil, so we are a part of the Mende speaking group. So among these 16 indigenous tribes, Pele, which is my language, is the largest. It makes up about 20% of the Liberian population. Next slide, yes, thank you. And uh, up to 870,000 people, Liberians are Pele. So I'm gonna give you some few facts about, like, about the Pele tribe. So traditionally, the Pele are subsistence farmers, meaning we grow, we grow crops and our main crop we grow is rice. We also plant other crops such as cassava, potato grains, and other fruits and cash crops like um, rubber. The Pele people are often described as hardworking, they are generous, and they are also very humble. And they are also one of the most conservative tribes, meaning we hold on to our traditions very strong. But before I can conclude, um, hey, Myra, I want one to... question. Yes. Do they say that the Capella tribe is crazy? And why do they say that? <laughs> oh, it's because it's because we are so generous. So many people, the other tribes consider us as being crazy. But I know being generous is not a form of being crazy. Yes. Yeah, so what do you mean by generous? How are they generous? Like we give uh, we give out a lot. For example, um, strangers are not strangers. They are more of like our families. If they come to visit, we always give them things, whatever we have there that we can give, even if we don't have anything. So that is one good thing about the Pele people. We are very generous. We give out a lot, even when we don't have. Oh. Yes. And English is our former language, but we have all these 16 tribes that we speak. But before I conclude, I'm going to teach, I want to teach you three, a uh, few Pele words or phrases that I would like for you to know or repeat after me. So this is how we greet in Pele. In the morning, we say kaun or Kaun. Yaun. Yaun. Yes. In the morning, we say kaun or yaun. So, kaun or yaun. Or yaun. <laughs> So kaun is when you are speaking, when you are saying good morning to one person, and yaun is when you are saying good morning to more than one, more than two people. So when you say, when someone says kaun, this is your reply. You reply kaun e. So uh, <laughs> I hope you learned that. Kaun e. Kaun e. Yes. Kaun e. <laughs> Yes, kaun, kaun e. So that's like in the morning. And in the evening, we say katwa or yatwa. Katwa okay, she or can yatwa. Step. Yes. Tomorrow katua. morning, we're going to test this out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's katwa or yatwa. So um, that is it for the counties and the tribes. And, uh, and let's go back to Tarly. So know more about the economy of our beautiful country, Liberia. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm going to tell you about our economy. Um, the Civil War and Ebola actually impacted Liberia, and today we are still among 
the poorest countries in the world, but we are making progress. We are trying to develop and become better. Um, in 2020, our GDP was 2.5 billion compared to the United States, that was about 20, over 20 trillion. So you can see how big the gap is there. We are not close to the United States. And our GDP per capita in 2020 was also 583 dollars per person. And that was like a decline of 6.21% since 2019. Our economy depends a lot on natural resources and foreign aid because we are still recovering. We have a lot of rubber and ocean shipping is like a big industry in Liberia. So we are also like the largest exporter of rubber in the world. So Liberia's natural resources are something that can help our economy to become better. Charlie, nice are there very many um, companies in Liberia? There are some companies in Liberia, but they are mostly mining companies that operate like in rural Liberia. They mine iron ore and other natural resources like diamond and gold. Mm. Yeah, so there's so no there like big, big corporations for you to go home and work for or, you know. Um, I think now some people are trying to go back to the country and like do something there. So we have some financial companies coming in. Like in the photo there, you can see Aminata, that is a gas station that's very popular in Liberia in the upper right hand corner. So okay. yeah, uh, we don't have a lot, but there are a few. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully we'll take more to Liberia. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to tell you how different the economy is in rural Liberia and in the city, in the urban areas. So in rural Liberia, a lot of people depend on subsistence farming, which is just farming in order to feed your family. In the morning, people go to the farm and work all day on like their rice farms. Rice is the staple food in Liberia. We eat rice a lot. So people will go to the farm and then do their work on the farm all day. And in the evening, they will go back to the town so in the upper right-hand corner, that is a photo of a typical Liberian town. So in those towns, we have like the families who live there with their children. And at times, those children have to go to like the next town to go to school if there is, for example, no high school in a town where they live. And not all of them are honestly in school. So that's how it is in rural Liberia. Um, Charlie, is that typical of where you went to, where you grew up and went to school? No, I was close to the capital city. So Pinesville, where I grew up, is actually a city, but it is not the capital. So it was different from that. It was a little bit like the photo you see down on the left. Okay. But that's like the street that you are seeing right now. So okay. in a city, um, most people do businesses in order to make an income because not everyone has an office job. So in the morning, we have the Liberian market women going to the business streets, to the big market to buy their goods that they will take to smaller markets and retail to people. And a lot of people are into fashion business. As you see the photos there with the colorful fabrics, those are Liberian fashion. And right now I'm wearing a Liberian blouse. As you can see the colors and everything, our fashion is very, very colorful. So that's how it is in, um, they were in urban Liberia, in the cities, a lot of businesses are there and those who do office job go to their offices during the day and come home in the evening. That's and who makes the clothes? Do they make the clothes in a factory or do people make the outfits at home? Um, no, so some people have small shops. So the photos you see up there in, in the, on, the, on the right is like a small shop that has like the clothes that has been made out on the front as a display, but back there, the, you will see the, like the person who owns this shop sitting behind a sewing machine making those clothes. I have one very close friend near where I live that I used to go to the shop too at times. And we have the typical Liberian clothing that you see here, but we also have a lot of clothes that are imported in Liberia and people also retail those. At some point, I also did that. I would go to the pig market and buy a bundle of clothes that have been imported. And I would take it back to my community and sell it and make some profit in order to transport myself to school. So and that's Charlie, the part. Yeah. Those were like donated clothes from the, 
U.S. or Western countries. Is that right? Used sometimes, clothing? Yeah, sometimes they are used clothing and sometimes they are clothes from other countries like China and other countries that are very industrious. Yes. Okay. So it's made. But they're used clothes, right? Some of them are Some... used. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, next slide. Uh, if you ask me to describe Liberia, I will say we are people who are very resilient because we've been through a lot, but we continue to move forward. We continue to stay positive. So I'll tell you a little bit about that as we go on. Next slide. Some of you might have already heard about the Liberian Civil War. This is a war that started in, 18, in 1989, and it lasted until 2003. I was born during this time. And the first civil war that broke out was actually a result of ethnic disputes and corruption and other things that people were not satisfied with. So the civil war had a huge impact on Liberia. A lot of infrastructure was destroyed. Children that should have been in school were turned into child soldiers, as you see in the photo right there. So this was very bad for our growth that was progressing during that time. Before the Civil War, people used to refer to Liberia as America in Africa or small America. But the Civil War caused a lot of infrastructure to be destroyed. Um, one thing I would say about this Civil War was how women stood up and took leadership in helping to end the Civil War. We also have ECOWAS, which is the Economic Community of West African States, that it is uh, like an organization of African countries that kind of try to promote peace in other African countries if there's something going on. So they intervened during the Civil War in order for it to end. And Next Carly, one. were you alive during the Civil War? I was born during the Civil War. So I really don't remember much, but I knew, I know there were times where my parents were glued to the radio, trying to see whether it's safe to stay in town or to just move to another place. And even up to today, they still tell us the stories. We hear about it in our history. So I remember a little bit, but not much because I was just born during that time and I was very young. Okay. So I mentioned that women took leadership during the civil war this is like what you see in the photo now with Liberian women sitting, holding posters that say, we want peace, we are tired, we want peace. These women who are mostly mothers took to the streets to demand peace because they were tired of the killings that were going on in Liberia. They were tired of seeing their country that they love so much being destroyed. So because they organized among themselves, they stood up to the leaders and they demanded that they put their arms down, Liberia was actually able to achieve peace later on. And Manalema Bowie, who is on the right, was one of those women leaders who helped to mobilize other women in the communities to call for peace. And then in 2011, she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize along with our former president, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. So we missed leadership, brought peace to us. Carly, a, Carly yeah. quick question before you go on. How were children recruited for the war? How were the child soldiers recruited? Okay. This is not something that I actually saw, but the documentaries and other things um, showed that if children were staying in communities and they did not have food, and you had somebody who had a lot of arms looking to recruit people, they would exchange like They'll give you food and tell you, come and join my, I don't know, it's not army, but come and join my rebel group, I would say. So that's how a lot of those children were recruited. If you did not want to be killed, you will also like join a group that could protect you. So those children were not like uh, willingly just going and saying, I want to become a soldier. They were recruited because they needed food, they needed protection, and they felt that the most powerful group could give them that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so yes, I talk about women's leadership and how they brought peace to us. The next slide, please. So another thing that hit Liberia and impacted us a lot was Ebola, which started in 2014 and it lasted until 2015. 
I was still in high school during this time. And our high schools, all schools in Liberia, in fact, had to be closed for the rest of the school year. And mm -hmm. it was like a very scary time. I remember when I even had to go out to go to the market and buy food, I had to be very careful. I did not want to be in contact with anyone. And what helped Liberia to overcome Ebola was the early leadership of President Ellen Joseph Zalif to enable others to take action. And a lot of awareness was also done in communities to enable people to know the preventive measures like washing hands and not touching anyone if you know they are sick and everything. And because Liberia experienced this, we went through Ebola in 2014. We were better prepared when COVID hit. We knew how to take preventive measures like washing hands. We knew how to be very careful. So this enabled us to be very like proactive in preventing COVID to some extent in Liberia. Tali, how did it? How old were you when Ebola hit? <laughs> I have to calculate, but I was in high school. Okay, how did it feel to be, the, you know, in high school then? Um, like I said, it was very scary. All schools were closed. Like mm -hmm. at the beginning, because this was like the first time in my lifetime that we were dealing with a pandemic. So we were all confused, but I remember like at the beginning, we would go to school and we would see like the big bucket sitting before the, the, the school building and you had to wash your hands before going in. So that's how we, we started to hear that people were dying in different locations. We knew that it was serious. So it was scary, but we got through it. Mira, do you remember it? Yes. Um, during that time, I was in high school as well. So, and school was like closed for like an entire year. So we had to stay in that fence at the orphanage and no one went out. And also there are no online schools. So we just got stuck in there, no education, just eating, eating, all scared. We're mm -hmm. all afraid for our lives. It was one of like the terrible time in, of my life. Yes. It was. And how many people died from Ebola during that time? Um, more than 250,000 people, I think. Wow. More than that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people died. A whole lot, it, yeah. It, it happened really fast in the beginning. Yes. Wow. Do, do people credit President Sirleaf with um, overcoming Ebola? Does she get much credit for that in Liberia? I think so, because like I know that she she empower people to take action. She empower the health ministry, and like they try to do emergency funding in order to like fight Ebola. I know that a uh, emergency treatment center was built right in Congo Town, not far from right like about fifteen minutes walk from where I live. So. Like, just having those things put in place early, I think is something that I can attribute to her. Awesome, thank you. And one more question. Um, were schools closed during COVID as well in Liberia? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, schools. I left during COVID to come here to Babson, but like when I left, schools were closed during that time. Yeah, and they were yes. closed for much longer after that. And people did not have online schools available to them. So that was like, I would say a bit of wasted time. So yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any more questions for Ebola? Okay. So um, I mentioned how women led during the civil war, but even after that, we may continue to take leadership roles in Liberia. We have Madam Ellen Justin Salif elected as our president in 2005, about two years after the Civil War has ended. And she was the first elected female head of state in Africa, in all of Africa. So she is a role model for many women and young women, including myself, because she inspired us and she showed us that we can go to any level once we know what we want. And today we have a female vice president Madam Chiwe Howard Taylor. So women have gone to very high levels of leadership in Liberia. 
Next slide. But uh, I must say that although we've had women in those very high positions, when it comes to like our legislature in the House of Representatives, we have eight females and most certainly three representatives. And we have two female senators among 30 senators in total. So there is still a huge gap that needs to be filled. So women's leadership at that level is now where we want it to be right now. Carly, is there yes. an election coming up? Oh, yes. Um, we have election in 2023 next year. So right now, a lot of political things are going on in Liberia. People are trying to start their campaigns early. People are trying to form coalitions and partnerships. So it is an interesting time in Liberia right now. There are a lot of women and running. We hope, and we hope, I think a lot of women are running, and we hope we'll have more women elected. Awesome. All right, Mira, back to you. Okay, thank you, Charlie. So regardless of all these adversities, Liberia is known to have some of the best food in West Africa. So that's good news. <laughs> so um, Liberians do have a wide variety of food, but rice is our staple food. We eat rice at least once a day or several times during the day, but it is prepared differently. We either eat rice with stew or, or soup, or we cook it as jollof rice. So as you can see in the right corner, yes, right up there, um, that is the picture of a jollof rice. So jollof rice is white rice cooked in tomato sauce, sausage, fish, mixed vegetables, and all of those ingredients. And jollof rice is like, a special occasion is a traditional special occasion food uh, cooked in Liberia because it is quite complicated and it's also time consuming. So we eat on holidays mostly. Um, uh, for example, in at the orphanage, my family and I on Christmas Day and the Independence Day, we cook jollof rice and eat that a whole lot. But jollof rice is not only native to Liberia, it is a West African dish, meaning it's cooked in other countries like Nigeria, Ghana, and Sierra Leone. But Liberia jollof rice is the best. I tell you no lie. So that is the reason why in 2018, Liberia won a jollof rice competition held among Ghana, Nigeria, and Liberia. So just think of that. So I think Charlie has some uh, information now that she can give us about the competition and how it went. You already said it, Liberia has the best jollof rice. So the yes. jollof rice competition is just like something interesting that's done among West African countries like Liberia, Nigeria, and Ghana. Like every country will make their jollof rice dish and people will go and taste it. And then there will mm -hmm. be a fourteen of what was their favorite. And Liberia has always won. We are not being biased, that's the truth. Yes, that's the truth, yes. <laughs> so our jollof rice is amazing. So another popular food in Liberia is the fufu. So here's the picture of the fufu, and this is someone beating it, pounding the fufu. That is how it is made. So fufu is uh, a dough food made from cassava, pounded cassava. And uh, we don't eat cassava, we don't eat the fufu as a whole, like we eat rice. We, we swallow it and we eat that with stew and other food. It's also a West African dish, meaning it's cooked in other parts of West Africa. And as I told you earlier, like we cook rice with either stew or as jollof rice. So some of the common soup or stew that we do eat our rice with are pan butter, though the picture is not there right now. Uh, we have potato greens, potato greens right there on the, on the lower right. The pellet people mostly eat that because we like a lot of vegetables. And and um, cassava leaf and so forth. Vegetables is also like a, a huge part of our meals. So next slide. Wait, Myra, if you have a meal yes. without rice, what do they say about it in Liberia? Oh, it's no meal. So this is and <laughs> this is us. So you can give a Liberian man uh, an entire bowl of pasta or meat. He would eat it, but after that if you ask him if he ate that day he would tell you he didn't eat because 
it is not rice was not included in that meal so if we don't eat rice we haven't eaten anything yet so <laughs> just in case you visit a Liberian man get ready to give him rice or <laughs> you tell you he didn't eat anything so um our next slide is about Liberian food so one thing is if whenever you're talking about Liberian food and we and you don't talk about the street food then you are not really talking about Liberian food so the Liberian food is like fast food in the U.S., but to me, it's quite safe and healthy. So um, as you can see in the pictures, the corn and the plantain chips are like one of the most popular ones. And the pepper color seen on the upper right-hand corner, the pepper color is eaten with, with, with spicy pepper sauce. So that is also good, but yeah. And another one I like is uh the coconut is not in that oh it's right down there the coconut is my favorite among the street food because i feel i wouldn't have to like spend double money buying water whenever i want i just um get the fruit from the coconut and then use that water or the juice that's in it as as uh, water to drink so that is it for the food in liberia and i hope one day you come to taste it for yourself now we we'll move on to the natural wonders of Liberia. So Liberia is best known to also have some of the most beautiful natural wonders in the world. And one of these natural wonders is the Sapo National Park. That is just a, a, a part of the picture. And the Sapo National Park is located in San Jose County. It um, is among one of the 261 natural wonders of the world. And one thing about it, it has the highest mammal diversity in the world. It has about 125 mammal species and 590 bird species. They also have some of these endangered species such as the hippopotamus and the African elephant. Next slide. The next natural wonder is the Blue Lake. The Blue Lake is located in Bombay County and it, it was founded from some pits, uh, some mining pits that were abandoned in the Bomi uh, Hill by the Liberian Mining Company. But after those pits in the, in the Bomi Hill were abandoned, nature was able to take control and water filled up those pits. And this later made the uh, Blue Lake. This is an amazing place to be. You can have picnic there. The area is beautiful and whenever you visit Liberia, it is a good um, tourist site. Next slide, please. And next is my personal favorite. The Batawi Waterfall is located in Bone County where I live. And it's more of like a tradition for people to go here whenever it's celebration on holidays, families go there to celebrate. So. For me, my family, I, we went there once and we took a whole lot of pictures and it was just fun being there. So um, it is also a very beautiful place for tourists to visit. So whenever you want, please come and visit. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> Next slide, um, the beaches. So Liberia is a coastal country. So you just have to mention the beaches. The beaches in Liberia are very gorgeous, I must tell you. They have golden and touch sands. They have very clear water and perfectly formed waved, waves. So uh, there are several beaches in Liberia, but the most popular one of these, next slide, are uh, this, oh no, let's go. Uh, the Sunset Beach located in Bikana, the Mamba Point Beach, and the Libasa Beach. So but we've been now, to the Wabasa Echo Lodge several times. Right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's where we go when we come. So fun. Okay. 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 So I think you can bear witness to that. It's beautiful, right? Yeah. So, um, it's super yes. fun. Yeah. So the tourist, the tourism industry in Liberia is growing more and more. So I encourage you to not only listen to these or hear about these, but also take some time off, maybe on your vacation or so, and visit Liberia to enjoy these amazing wonders thank you so we'll go back to Charlie to uh talk to us about some cultural celebrations in Liberia 
Yes, Colleen, you should definitely come on a next trip. I just saw your chat. I'm in. I'm um, in. <laughs> I'm raising my hand from afar. <laughs> Wait, who's okay. there? Okay, Colleen. Colleen. Okay, great. Yeah. We got you on the list. <laughs> I'm yes. on the list. So, um, Liberia has like a very unique culture and we like to display that whenever we get the chance. And that is usually during like celebrations like our Independence Day as well as court, as festivals. You will see Liberians dressed up in like their traditional clothing and their Liberian prints. So the photo you see on the upper left is just a recent photo in February when we celebrated our 200 years of existence since 1822. So yes, this is the Liberian culture and we like to show it. And you'll see more if you come to Liberia. Next slide. So we don't have a lot of time, but if you want to hear more and just know more about Liberia, there are a lot of media sources that I can recommend to you. We have the Liberia National Television, we have ELBC, we have Front Page Africa and other sources. And you'll get like a lot of current events about Liberia from these various sources. So ELBC and LNTV are like government controlled, I would say, because like they are the government stations. But Front Page Africa is more private and I would say more independent, just as you have different news sources here in the United States. Right now, some current event I mentioned earlier is that um, we have a general election coming up next year. So there's a lot of politics going on in Liberia right now. And just last week, we had like some celebration, I would say, because we had a newly constructed park the Invisible Sports Park that was dedicated in Liberia. And it is really pretty from the photos that I have seen. So I can't wait to go back and see it in person. So yes, check those out if you want to learn more about Liberia. Next slide. Well, you know, Charlie, I just want to jump in. I, I have a, a Google alert set to Liberia. And I uh -huh. get, you know, every day I get a list of the current news in Liberia, including how the US administration is dealing with the war criminals. It's it's a really good suggestion. You don't have to go to all those sites if you just you just get a smattering of them. Yeah, definitely. So we have other things that you can also read like books written about Liberia. So we'll tell you some of them very quickly. Mira, you want to talk about the books? Sure. So these are some uh, book recommendations you can read if you want to know more about Liberia. Um, one of these, as you can see on the left, is called, uh, which is called Witness, was written by my uncle, Kwanu Kwanu Kemu. Uh, the book is basically about his experience as a child uh, in, this, in the 14-year civil crisis in Liberia. So these are all like list of books written by Liberians and about Liberians that if you read, you'll be able to know more about. So please make these a part of your book clubs or monthly readings and get to know more about beautiful country. So thank you. And Charlie. for films, for films, we have Pray the Devil Back to Hell, which is very popular and we have Liberia and on civil war, we also have something about Firestone, which has been in Liberia since 1926, the rubber plantation company. There's a film that you can watch about them. And we have a lot of other recommendations down there. So definitely when you have the time, check some of them out and watch to learn more about Liberia. Yeah, I can say that Pray the Devil Back to Hell is, is excellent. It's, it was done by Abigail Disney and it is about the women who, the true story of the women ending the Civil War. And there's real footage of Lima Bowie, who we featured earlier, like telling the the um, peace people to go back in there and <laughs> yeah, know, stop back. this war. And she's telling them shit. And it's really good. It's really good. It's really good. Really good, really good is that, footage. Is that, net, is that Netflix? Can you find that one on Netflix? I'm not sure if it's Netflix anymore, but it's definitely on one of the streamings. Some it's of the not streaming hard services. to find. Yeah, it's you old. can find it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you heard yeah. a song when you joined early, but for those who did not join to hear the song, these are some of your songs. You want to play it quickly? I, I don't know. Yeah. The, the first um, one I think I won't because we're a little yeah. low on time and we were Wait, playing it yeah, at the beginning. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, but, so, but, yeah. 
sister. So Tali, are these from... Liberian or Nigerian? Liberian. 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 Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we don't have a lot of time, but we will stop here. There's a lot we could tell you about Liberia, but we'll open it up for questions. And we invite you to come and visit Liberia when you can. I'm sure you'll enjoy yes. it. Yes, please come. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any questions? There was one question that popped up in the chat about what, um, if any, minerals are mined in Liberia. Yes, Liberia has a lot of resources like diamond. I know in Sano County, there's like a high level of mining when it comes to diamond and coal, and there are other rural counties like that where I own, Nima County, where yeah, I'm from, I own, there's yeah. There's a big mining company, like I think it's called Lamp. I forgot the name, but yes. So we have iron ore, we have gold and diamond and some other natural resources that are mining that are mine. Yes, um gold, diamond, gold is mined in Bone County as well, and mm -hmm. iron ore in other places. Just as Darlene said. Yeah. <laughs> And then I think a question came through from Jill. She said, how did you both learn about the SheCan program when you were in Liberia? Um, for me, it was through a friend that I knew when I was in high school and we used to volunteer together. When he saw the SheCan application, he forwarded it to me and he said, I should apply, I might be a good fit. So I applied and I went through the process and I'm here today studying in the US. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, for me, for me, I learned about Shikan from my uncle, Kwanu Kwanu Kimo, who wrote the witness book. He told all the girls how they all finished about it, and we all applied, and fortunately, I was the only one to get accepted, so, yeah. So Q is, um, he lives in Sacramento now, book, that's a really good book also. I mean, I think that the one movie that we talked about and the witness book, highly recommended, and Q is like a partner for us. He's a good liaison in Liberia. He goes to Liberia a lot, but he lives just in Sacramento and he comes to our gala. And so when we were looking for scholars, we of course reached out to Q and we got Mira and we also took another, we have another scholar that um, is in our program um, from the um, orphanage as well. Yeah. For co the coming year, we're still debate, we're still deciding if every one of those in the program are gonna make it, but there's one in the running. We're hoping she'll get there. We have another question about schooling, just in terms of particip participation between boys and girls, and maybe if you can speak to participation and tuition fees and how that affects um, girls attending school in Liberia. Charlie or, or Myra, anyone wanna jump in? Yeah, um, so in high school, it is starting to change now, but like there's been this thing that more boys go to school than girls. And even in school, like boys feel more confident to like participate in class. And I think there's like to some extent more like preference that's given the boys and that kind of limits girls. But then I would say there are a few girls who actually compete with boys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to talk about myself, but yes, yeah, some of us do that. <laughs> And we do well, so yes, that's something that's happening. And what was the other part of the question? But uh, teachers? Say that again, Tarly. Yeah. What was the second part of the question? Um, tuition or school fees? Oh, oh yes, yeah. okay. Um, so yes, we have private schools in Liberia and we have public schools. The public schools, you don't have to pay tuition, but there might be like certain fees that you have to pay. And the public schools are usually more crowded. Some of the private yeah. schools are very expensive, but not all of them are expensive. So people who can afford to send their children to private school do that. And then when it comes to university, we have the state-run university, University of Liberia, where I started studying before coming here. Right now, it is tuition free, but you have to pay some fees for registration. You have to transport yourself because the campus is located. Um, very far from where most people live. 
Yes, for for me, I attended a uh, private school, so my guardians had to pay money. So just as Starley said, some uh, public school schools you don't pay like school fees, but you do pay some fees like registration fees and stuff like that. But for private school, you have to pay registration fees, school fees, and everything. So. And then what about college? Um, the University oh. of Liberia is free now, correct? If you can get in. The University of Liberia, the state university, right now, I think it is tuition free, but there's like other fees that you still have to pay for like projects and registration. Yeah. But there are private universities as well. Very expensive, I would say. Yeah. Okay. How about you share with us some of your favorite things about Liberia? Some things you may not have told us about yet. I don't know that I already talked about the food. <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah, but I just think I love the Liberian culture. Um, we are kind of like a very fun group of people. Like very friendly, there's yes. no way you'll be around a Liberian and not be able to laugh for the entire time or at least there's something funny that has to come up. So even though we have like a lot of things we've been through, we are still like, very funny. We try to find a reason to smile. So I think that's something I really like about Liberia. Yes, and we are also resilient, as Charlie said in her presentation. Regardless of all the ups and downs, or the hardship and poverty, and all those challenges of maybe losing a parent or not, we are always willing, you know, to go forward and push. And even other, even if other people look down on us or oh, well, Whatever it is, we're always willing to, you know, push forward and be our best selves. I have a question. When we were in Liberia, we were taught a lot of fun Liberian phrases like eat crab without shame, you know, meaning if you're going to go for it, just go for it. Like, yes. did I get it right? You guys, they say it right? Don't, don't eat crab with shame. With shame. Don't eat crab yeah. with shame. Yeah, and then we have like cuckoo chumoko if you're not in it. You know, you don't say, know. You know, you know. Yeah. Wait, you know, say it slower. Know. I like that one. Say it slower. <laughs> what it means. It's cuckoo chumoko. Uh huh. So we translate it as you're not inside, you don't know, which means if you're not in it, you don't know. If you're you not in it. a situation, you will not know what's you know really going it. on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's not put in the chat for the spelling if you want to know. <laughs> and Lena just asked what the weather mm -hmm. is like. So Liberia has two seasons, the rainy season and the dry season mm -hmm. that is like divided into half of the entire year. So we have six months where it's mostly sunny and then like the other half, there's rain most of the time. So yeah. Mm -hmm. During the dry season, it's a nice time to go to the beaches and everything. Yes, it's like 70, 60 degrees during that time, sometimes 80. So get ready for some burn. <laughs> yeah, I'll go to the beach when you can. Um... Madison had a great question in the chat here. So now that you've been in the US for a while, um, what are some misconceptions about Liberia? What do you wish Americans and foreigners knew? Um... So, for first of all, a lot of people don't know Liberia, but those who do, all they can think about is the Civil War or the country where there was a lot of cannibalism. But that's not who we are. I think that's something that Liberia has overcome. We are like a very beautiful country with a beautiful culture. And because that's the picture that's been in the news before, especially during the Civil War, that's what some people still think, but that's not the reality right now. Yes, another another misconception is where they say Liberia is dangerous. Like yeah, is, I think. It's is bad to be there. So sometimes when they say that, I start to think, but where did I come from? Where did we come from? <laughs> so if Liberia was that dangerous, then we are all dead by this time. So um, I think that misconception is not good because I think in one way or the other, every country has some kinds of negative part of them. But um, the fact that we take one little negative thing and, and put in 
put on that bulletin board and say that is how Liberia is everywhere, it is really bad. So Liberia is not dangerous, it is safe as well. Though there are some other things that go on. I'm wondering what is the what is the most common way to get around the country? So transportation. Oh, a lot of trucks, uh, taxis, um, buses, bicycles, or or bikes, motorbikes. Yes, motorbikes. Yes, motorbikes. Those a lot of taxis, motorbikes. Motorbikes are popular than the cars mm -hmm. because uh, I think they are less they are less expensive, right? Then I think motorbike is still expensive, but it's faster because it can reach yeah. a lot of communities. Yeah. Most specifically when there's traffic. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. All right. I think we're out of time. We're right at the six o'clock mark. Tarly and Myra, you were awesome. Really awesome. It was so Thank fun you. putting this Thank together. Thank you for joining you. us. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Yeah. Um, so we'll follow up. We'll send you a recording so you can get all those books and um, and and movies. And um, don't forget, we have another showing on May third from five to six. And at this time, it will be So Vin and So Shed a Hoot, um, and they'll be talking about Cambodia. So I hope you come back and join us. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye, you, everybody.